Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Today we have the opening game of the season for you and it's a local derby against Spalding United. Now then, I hope you're all well. I'm doing pretty well myself. I'm very excited for this opening game of the season. We've had a pretty decent pre-season. I'll show you through that in a second. Uh, we've had a pretty decent pre-season. I think we're ready to hit the ground running and hopefully we're going to get a decent result today. Now a lot has happened. A lot has happened since you were last here. Um, now if you've been following me on Twitter, you'll have followed this drama. Followed the drama all the way. Literally, I think it was three days into the save, uh, the chairman left the club and uh, we, we had a takeover. A takeover three days into the club. I don't know if the, 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 the news items are still here. Let's have a quick look for it. Uh, if we type in takeover, uh, does it come up? Uh, okay, so it said the board lifted the transfer embargo there. That's the last thing I've got in the news thing about it. But we had a new board come in, which was very exciting. So you can check out on Twitter. I, I'll leave a link in the description for you. But I'll run you down pretty quickly what happened. So the club went up for sale and supporters board came in to buy the club and that, that that did happen a few days later on and then after that the new chairman said to me we're going to sack you basically they said we're going to sack you but try and prove yourself first so i had to prove myself in the friendlies which was a little bit weird it wasn't one of those situations where they give you like five games to get so many points it was just like if you do well you do well you can stay in the job sort of thing but during that time period i had a transfer embargo put on me so i couldn't sign any players so i had to do the players that i had at the start of the season so basically I played the whole preseason with no left-sided players. Like, we've got one or two players on the left-hand side of the pitch who can play them. But I wanted to sign some players, as I said in the last episode, on the left-hand side of the pitch. But I couldn't do that. So I've had to really makeshift that left-hand side of the pitch. Uh, luckily, they've let me stay. And they said to me, yep, you can stay at the club. You can, you know, stay at the club. You can sign players now. But that was only a week ago. So I've had one week to scout players and try and sign players, which has been very difficult. No one has been signed yet. Uh, that's the main thing. No one's been signed yet. We may have a, uh, someone come up in the next few days, but no one's been signed yet, which is a, uh, an issue. So that was the main excitement. A new a new board came in. Uh, they gave us £500 to put into the transfer budget, um, which hasn't been great, obviously. We don't need to spend the transfer budget. And it was only £500. So it's, I mean, wasn't really life-changing money for the club, was it? Pre-season did go pretty well. We uh, we added in an extra few friendlies. We got rid of that weird one that was in between the Spalding and the Wispeach game. Uh, but we had had a few good friendlies, to be fair. Uh, we beat Hemsworth, whoever they are. Hemsworth Mariners, Miners. We beat Barton Town. We beat Ghoul. We lost 2-1 very narrowly to, to Telford. And actually, we had a really close game with Lincoln City. They scored in the 93rd minute to win it. So actually... We should have drawn that game. We had a really good game against them. So we can take a lot of confidence from that game, I think. And then last time out, we beat Hinkley 4-2 in a friendly as well. So we've had a pretty decent pre-season. Uh, the players are all ready and raring to go. 100% match fitness. I think I've picked my starting eleven, And I'm going to show you it now as we go into this game against Spalding United. So this is it then. This is the, the formation that we're going for, the team we're going for. Uh, we're going for a 4-4-2 as is, you know, the standard tactic. We're going for a Route 1 mentality. Now, the reason I went for a Route 1 mentality is because, essentially, we can't do anything else. You know, pretty much. We can't really do much else. Um, it's not like these players have got massive, great passing ability. We can't play tiki taco. Like It's just not going to work that kind of system at this kind of level, especially on the pitches that we're playing on. Route 1 is probably the best way to go. So this is going to be our main tactic, the 4-4-2 Route 1 system. As you can see here, it's just the default one. You know when you set up a new tactic, uh, if we go to create a new tactic, for example, uh, we went down to Route 1 and it's got all these already preset built routes, basically. So we just went for that. This, this is what we've gone for. So I've not actually changed anything on this yet, um, which is a little bit scary. Perhaps I should change things a little bit, but it's worked quite well in pre-season, so I'm happy with that. If we look in the team report quickly, uh, I did notice down here that uh, it talks about goalkeepers quite a lot. Uh, but uh, at the time, it did seem to say that we had some good dribbling ability and some good passing ability in the squad, actually. Uh, although I can't see it right there now. I promise you it did say that. We had some good dribbling and some good passing ability. So our backup formation is more of a, a fluid counter-attack. So hopefully we'll, we'll soak up some pressure and then the team will go on a counter-attack and then hopefully we'll win. Either way, back to the squad. Uh, let's take you through all the players then. So we'll start at the back with Michael Emery. We spoke about him last episode. Uh, he's had a very, very good preseason, actually. I've been impressed with him. Uh, as you can see, his goalkeeping attributes are pretty decent, I've got to say. He's got some good ones there, especially the reflexes, the handling, the aerial reach, command of the area. There's some good ones, to be fair. Um, now, he's been on a tour of Lincolnshire, actually. Um, 
pretty much Gagnes. He's also used to play for Spalding, uh, gained maternity Boston United. Um, has ventured outside of Lincolnshire because he did go to St. Neots. So that's in Cambridgeshire. So he has ventured outside of Lincolnshire. But um, I think, as you'll see, there's a bit of a theme with our players that a lot of them are just stayed in Lincolnshire. So right back then, Matt Wilson. He is our right back of choice. Now, naturally a centre-back, but uh, is the best right back that we've got apparently as well. Uh, so he's got some decent attributes where they matter. Uh, if you look at right back for a, for a full back, I think that's what he's playing today. Was he playing wing back? I think it's full back he's playing today. Again, tour of Lincolnshire and actually a bit of Nottinghamshire as well because he has played for Alfredton as well uh, for quite a long time. So Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire for for Matt Wilson, not very far. Uh, sort of same the same area as a lot of our players have done. Now you can argue that he's being wasted out at right back, but um, we we don't have another right back who's better than him at the moment, especially with transfer embargo stuff that we've had. So Wilson is at right back, Matt Wilson. We've got Michael Jacklin who we recognised last time as the best player in the squad. As you can see, got some really, really good attributes on him as well, uh, especially these, these, these technical ones with the heading, the marking, the tackling, really good for this kind of level. Again, he's been in and around Lincolnshire pretty much. Started at Grimsby, which is very bad, before we go to North Ferriby, which is actually just in Yorkshire, I think, just in Yorkshire. So again, outside the county just a little bit, but uh, Grantham, Briggs, Spalding, Lincoln United, Gaines, Trinity, all in Lincolnshire pretty much. Um, so hopefully it's going to be decent. In fact, last, last season he played for Gaines, Trinity, last season. So he's dropped down quite a bit. Uh, in between seasons, played 35 games in last season. So he was obviously an integral part of the squad, has come to Lincoln United now, and hopefully he's going to be one of the best players in the league. Partnering Michael Jacklin at centre-back is Sean Wright. Now, Sean Wright, uh, again, is a decent centre-back. Not Wouldn't be the first choice. Wilson would be the first choice centre-back alongside Jacklin, but Wilson's got to play at right-back. So Sean Wright comes in at centre-back. I think he's played at the club for quite a long, in fact, all his career apart from a short spell at Stamford, but he's done pretty well for himself, obviously. Uh, established himself as a real Lincoln United icon, I would imagine, at this stage of the game. So hopefully he's going to have a decent game today alongside Jacqueline. We've got Scott Matthews at left-back. Now, left-back is where we wanted to strengthen. The whole left-hand side of the pitch is where we wanted to strengthen, and we've not been able to do it quite yet because of a transfer embargo. Uh, he's actually a winger, more than anything. Uh, he's... <laughs> He's, he's competent at left-back, but perhaps not the best player to play there. Where the stats matter, though, they're, 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 they're okay. They're, they're okay where they matter. Again, he's been around Lincolnshire, pretty much. Uh, he has ventured outside a little bit. Bottersford, that's in Nottinghamshire as well, but not gone too far. Had a few spells at Lincoln United, actually. Uh, played at Grantham as well, Cleethorpe. So around this kind of level of football for quite a while. So Scott Matthews, that makes up the defensive line. Let's move into the midfield then. We'll start on the left-hand side of the pitch this time. We have got Callum Smith as the left midfielder. Now, he's actually a natural left midfielder, uh, but unfortunately, he's, he's he's just not that great, really, compared to the rest of the squad. Uh, he's been at Lincoln United himself for quite a while as well. Uh, he's been there for the past few seasons, been at Grantham, Workshop, and Boston. So again, another Lincolnshire-based lad. Perhaps we need to make this a, a challenge in the series. We can only ever sign players that have played in Lincolnshire. Perhaps that is what we have to do. No, actually, that's a stupid that is a stupid idea because we'll never get anywhere if that happens. There's what? Ten clubs in Lincolnshire that are well, ten clubs in Lincolnshire, that's probably what it is, and that's probably being kind. So um let's not do that. That's probably not the best thing to go for, especially as none of the clubs are very good either. Uh let's move into central midfield though. We've got Rob Norris making up uh, one half of the central midfield partnership. He comes in as the box to box midfielder today. Uh, he looks like a decent player, actually. Three and a half star current ability. One of the better players at the squad. 30 years old, so getting on a little bit. Hopefully, we'll have some good players come through the youth ranks in the next few seasons to try and replace the old guard. Again, his history, he's been at Lincoln United for quite a while. Was it Dunkirk, which I believe is in Nottingham? Uh, he's been at Loughborough Dynamo as well. Been all, in fact, this guy has been travelling around a bit, to be fair. So, Rob Norris is probably the most travel player outside of Lincolnshire by looks of things. But uh, a lot of the, actually, a lot of it is just in Nottinghamshire as well. So I don't know if Loughborough is in Nottinghamshire or Leicestershire. So, actually, he could have played in three different counties, which is very interesting. Either way, Rob Norris makes one half of the central midfield partnership. Hopefully, he's going to be a good part of that. Uh, we've got Toyne, Andy Toyne. In the middle, he's a ball wing midfielder. Uh, the first player so far to be fully comfortable in their position. Uh, he's a ball wing midfielder. Good attributes where they matter. Uh, leave some to be desired for where, you know, his penalty taking is one. But, you know, he's a midfielder. We don't need that too much. But, you know, that could be better in case we ever need him. Again, another 30-year-old player in the central midfield. Hopefully we'll have some good youth players coming through in the next few seasons to try and replace these guys as we phase out the old guard. His history is based at Lincoln United for the past few seasons, to be fair, but has been around, again, Lincolnshire, uh, South Lincolnshire, things like with Stanford. Started at Lincoln City, actually. Now, I didn't know that. Um, I don't remember him playing for Lincoln City. I, that, that, he's probably a youngster, actually. He's probably like 12 years old playing for Lincoln then, so that's probably why I don't remember him. But uh, obviously started there 
and has then done a tour of Lincolnshire. Matt Cotton starts on the right of midfield. I think he is probably the best player that we've got in the squad. He's been the most consistent over pre-season. I've been very impressed with him. Four and a half star current ability, five star potential. Now, I believe he started his career at Lincoln City. He did start his career at Lincoln City. I sort of remember him uh, being in the youth squad, but that's when we were rubbish. So it didn't really matter too much. But again, Brig, Stanford, Lincoln-based clubs or Lincolnshire-based clubs. I think Brig actually is that... Ooh, that could actually be Yorkshire, if I'm thinking of the map right. I could be a little bit wrong, I'm not sure. But uh, has played at Brig and Stanford and been at Lincoln United for the past few seasons. Scored 15 goals last season from the right of midfield. So Matt Cotton is going to be dangerous. So there we go, that's the midfield. And now let's move into the striker position. We'll start with Paul Grimes. Uh, 34 years old now uh, and is subject to a lot of bids from teams because he's not actually on a contract. Uh, we have offered him a contract because he's been the top scorer in pre-season, has Paul Grimes. Uh, five goals from five games, although four of them came in one game. Played at Lincoln United uh, for the past two seasons. Scored uh, 11 goals in the league last season, which is a pretty good return. Uh, and again, he's played all over Lincolnshire as well. Uh, most of his career actually at Brig, interestingly, in Grantham. So uh, again, another Lincoln-based player or Lincolnshire-based player to make up with the rest of the squad that's all Lincolnshire-based. And making up the starting 11 is Connor Robinson. So Connor Robinson, uh, striker, formerly of Lincoln City. Uh, he used to play in the first team, actually, for Lincoln City. Again, when we weren't very good. Uh, unfortunately, his career has sort of been hampered with injuries, so he's never really got off the block somewhere. I think he had a lot of potential, could have been a very good player at Lincoln, but kept getting injured all the time. Never really got a good run in the squad, and that was when we were quite rubbish as well, so he didn't really have the supply that he needed. Uh, unfortunately for him, has sort of dropped down a little bit. He could have, I think he could have been a decent player, to be fair, if it wasn't for injuries. Uh, and again, I think I mentioned it last episode, but I don't think he should be playing for Lincoln United in game at the moment. I think he's got a long term injury, but. He's here in game for whatever reason, so we're going to try and use and abuse that. Probably the best attacking player we've got, actually. He's got some good stats and attributes where they matter. Uh, as a pressing forward, apparently you don't need much uh, in terms of shooting and things like that, apparently. But he's got some good finishing. He's got some good free kick taking, first touch heading. So he should be a danger man in front of goal. Fingers crossed, he'll score plenty of them. And that's a starting 11. Uh, we'll take you through subs and other players when we when we get to them. But uh, when they come on the pitch and things like that, we'll, we'll show you them. But we won't show it right now, just because I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get into today's game. With a team that we've got then, we're looking at we're looking at a mid-table a mid -table finish, I think, apparently. If we look at the season preview, we are predicted to finish 11th. So pretty mid-table. So... If we can sort of make a push for the playoffs this season, I'll be very happy. But I won't be too fussed if we don't, because it's there's a lot to do. There's a long way to go in this season, and I've not made any transfers yet. You know, we're very weak on the left-hand side of the pitch. So if we can just avoid relegation, and if we can sort of push towards playoffs, that'd be fantastic. So we've gone through the team. We've shown you the table. Let's have a quick look at a press conference then. Let's attend this very, very quickly with uh, BBC Lincolnshire. Thank you, David Woodcombe from BBC Lincolnshire. Um... Have you been able to settle upon a first choice regular team over the course of preseason? I think we have done. I think that the team I've shown you is pretty much going to be the team. Um, it's an early fixture. It's, it's an opportunity for everyone to show what they can do. I think we'll say that just to be safe, to make sure we, we keep all our players happy out there. Uh, do you think Lincoln United can get off to a winning start? Our preparation is complete. I know the lads will get a good result. That's probably a little bit too too risky to say that. I believe the team is developing well. We'll say that. The team's developing well. We hope we should get a positive result. Uh, most pundits suggest that Connor Robinson's performances, we've already said he's going to be a very good player. Uh, most pundits suggest that Connor Robinson's performances will be the key factor in determining if you have a successful season or not. Now, I don't think that's quite true. We've got, as I say here, we've got many good players here. If everyone has a good season, we'll have a good season. If you want to have a good season, everyone has to contribute. We'll say that. That will make everyone else feel a little bit happier, I think. Uh, do you feel the team is ready to get underway this season? We've had a great preseason. We're fully prepared and confident of a win. I'm saying that. That's a little bit outrageous, perhaps, that we're saying it. And uh, you must be looking forward to getting the season underway as much as the supporters are. Well, it's great to finally get underway. I've been looking forward to this moment all pre-season. So a pretty decent press conference there. I don't usually do them, but I'd like to do a few more on this one because I think it is interesting and it adds a little bit more immersion, doesn't it? Right then, first, first team talk of the new season. We should encourage the boys, apparently. Uh, we're going to go assertively. Uh, go out there and impress me. We're going to say that. Michael Emery. Ugh, Michael Emery. Lo what a lovely man. I can see why Dr. Benji liked him so much. He's gained confidence already. The only player to to know anything significant from that, from that team talk. Um, hopefully the players will, will start to enjoy things a little bit more. Hopefully they'll they'll react to me a little bit better like Michael does. But uh, here we go. The first game, obviously, against Spalding United. We play in the white and the red. Technically, it's a full white kit, actually, that we're playing with, like red collars and things like that. Spalding are in the blue, as you can see. 
And fingers crossed, we're going to get off to a good start. Although, Hugo puts in a corner for Spalding and it's, it's cleared, actually. Norris now could potentially start off a counter-attack as Grimes puts the ball up towards Robinson, but doesn't really put it anywhere near Robinson. Ball comes back to us, but cleared by Matthew there. Norris has a chance to come forward. Paul Grimes on the ball back to Norris. If we can sort of overload this left-hand side of the pitch, it could be okay. Smith puts the ball forward towards Grimes, but doesn't quite get there. Humble gets in, in the way, and it goes back to uh, Spalding's goalkeeper, Duggan who clears it, but that's a poor clearance, to be fair. And uh, it just bounces around midfield. And again, here comes Spalding. Highlights. If the game's like this, to be fair, it's up and down. Although Paul Grimes, in behind the defence, has a shot, scores! Four minutes into the game. And Lincoln United have scored their first goal in the whatever division we're in. I can't even remember the name of it. Step 8. We're just going to call it Step 8 because it's... The league name is way too long. So there we go. Paul Grimes scores the first goal for Lincoln United. We'll, we'll, I'm going to write that down. I've got a post-it notes here. I'm going to write this down. When we are at 100 episodes in the future, we can look back and say Paul Grimes started all this off. So then, a pretty good start to the game, I've got to say. A pretty good start to the game. We'll, uh, we'll also change this focus of attack uh, to the league table as well. Just so we can keep an eye on what's going on. Currently second in the table behind uh, Bryhouse Town which is going to be interesting. I don't know how good they are. In fact, I don't know how good any of these teams are. You know, I I can't say I spend much of my time looking at the whatever league we're in table. I know Lincoln United are pretty decent. We're doing pretty well this season, actually, Lincoln United in real life. I think they're fourth or second in the table. I can't remember, actually. Um, I, I'm at the, I was at the game the other day, uh, and I'm recording this before I go to the game. So um, what I'm telling you now is, is, is outdated news. So whatever you see, it's probably different now. Although Matt Cotton on the ball, on the edge of the area, tries to put a cross in. Blocked by Hugo at the near post. The highlight is continuing though, as as Spalding come forward. I thought that highlight was for us coming forward with the with the cross there. Matt Cotton with a dangerous cross. The ball forward to Connor Robinson is a fantastic one. Connor Robinson goes alone. Really should have put it across the Paul Grimes there. I think to make get the second goal of the game. Uh, to be fair, he had a chance to score. Connor Robinson had was well within his rights basically to take the shot. I think, but uh, really probably should have been better by passing to Paul Grimes there. In fact, actually, uh, a few weeks ago, I was at the Spalding United Lincoln game, although the, re the reverse fixture, uh, Lincoln United playing at home, that was where I got all the footage from that you've seen in the introduction and things like that. Uh, that's, but yeah, what I got the footage from. We, that was a two-all draw, that game, actually. Uh, Matt Cotton, although, has just been given a straight red card. Uh, now, now this is, this is exciting, isn't it? It's not, it's not exciting at all. Fortunately, Connor Robinson kind of can play Ooh, not he, ooh, he, he can't really play there, actually. He can play attacking midfield. So perhaps we leave him there. Paul Grimes can go a little bit more central. He can be a winger on... Hmm, so maybe make him a wide target man. Is that a little bit better, maybe? Uh, let's make him a wide target man support. Just because we're playing Route 1 football. But we there is a little bit of a gap on the right-hand side of the pitch right now. Uh, and we don't really have anyone to replace him. We may take Conor Robinson off later on to see if we can bring someone else there. Can... Josh Nickel might be able to play there actually later on. But we'll, we'll leave it like this for now. Okay, we'll leave it like this for now with 10 men on the pitch. Um, that is a shame, actually, that our, our, the best player in the squad, Matt Cotton, has been sent off. We go into half-time, though, won the love, which is good. Um, so we've got 45 minutes with only 10 men to, to hold on. So it's going to be difficult for us now with a man down. So keep your performance levels up. A lot of motivated faces there, which is nice to see. A lot of motivated faces, that's good. Second half starts then, and as long as we can just keep, as I say, if we keep our performance levels up, hopefully Conor Robinson will track back a little bit more as that wide target man. I think we'll probably take him off, actually. Uh, or actually, we'll probably swap him and Paul Grimes around, and we'll take Grimes off on that left-hand side, or right-hand side of the pitch for, for someone else. I think Nichols can play there, but probably not much better than Carl Robinson can. No highlights. That I, was, I was about to say no highlights so far in the second half. There is a highlight now as Spalding looked to come forward on the ball, putting it just over the bar. Uh, and I was telling him actually before, wasn't I? I was at the Lincoln United versus Spalding game at Lincoln a few weeks ago where I got the footage from. That was a tool game with a Lincoln player being sent off actually. And uh, we equalised with 30 seconds or so to go in the game. It was like it was a great win, to be fair. Well, it felt like a win the way we scored the goal, to be fair, at the end. But it was a great result, especially with a man down. And we were 2-0 down in that game as well. So hopefully, Lincoln United will be just as good in-game as they are real life. We are going to make some changes, though, out there. Um, we're going to, Actually, we are going to take Conor Robinson off, actually. He, well, he's better than Paul Grimes, technically, but he's not played too well today. So we're going to bring Josh Nickel on for him. Now, Josh Nickel, uh, can he... Oh, he can't play there either, can he? He, he can play as a winger, actually. We'll put him on as a winger on support. That might be 
that's the, the best we can go for, I think. Uh, Josh Nickel is a striker, actually, normally, but sort of can play anywhere across the attacking line, as you can see there. He's quite a useful player to have. Uh, again, his history is pretty much Lincolnshire, Gainsborough Town, Brig, Lincoln United. It's, it's, it's a Lincolnshire-based squad, this, as I've said before. Uh, but hopefully Josh Nickel is going to be a decent backup player for us this season. Looking around quickly, Matthews at left-back is looking tied, but we don't have any other left-backs we can bring on um, or any other left-sided players we can bring on the pitch. He's got to stay there. Uh, Toyne is getting tired out there, though, so we're going to bring Liam Dickens on for him in the centre of midfield. Dickens, a light replacement, actually, also wants to be a ball-winning midfielder. Dickens, not quite as good as Toyne, I don't think, although actually this suggests that he is, so perhaps we should be playing Dickens for Toyne. Uh, Toyne played more pre-season, he was better over pre-season, I think, but uh, Liam Dickens is... Current ability and potential, actually, is probably something we should be using. Dickens has been, uh, he's been around the Grimsby area, actually, starting at Grimsby, then playing at Cleethorpes for quite a bit, but now plays uh, for Lincoln United this season. So hopefully he's going to be a good addition to the squad. Hopefully he'll be a star player for us over the season. Hopefully he's going to be uh, a solid part of it. Hopefully him and him and Toyne will battle it out. Well, it's nice to have an, a little battle there, I think. It's always good to have competition in place because it pushes other players harder and harder in training it looks like though we are going to hold on for the win we've got 10 minutes left in this game there have been no highlights at all in the second half which is what i like to see especially when we're a man down and we're winning no highlights means that no one else can get sent off and it means no one else can score so if there are no highlights and we're winning one nil up that that's fine by me if we get the three points that's all that matters the clock though does continue to tick down as we approach the 90th minute we've got three minutes of added time is the Lincoln Loco going to get off to a winning start? It's Dickens' free kick there, actually looking pretty decent, just wide of the post. Is the Lincoln Loco 2 going to get off to a winning start? Well, with 10 seconds left on the clock, it has to. Surely it has to. Smith collects the ball in midfield, plays it into Dickens. Dickens just punts it up to the corner. And that is that. We get off to winning ways with Lincoln United. Paul Grimes' goal separating the two teams there. And we have won. And got three points on the board. Passionately, a very nice victory there. Well done. Everyone looks delighted with themselves. And so they should. They played very well out there. Especially with 10 men for 45 minutes. That is a great result. So there we go. That 1-0 win puts us 7th on the first day of the season. Every team that won only won by one goal. So, it, I mean, perhaps that shows that everyone is pretty equal at this level. Perhaps it's going to show that no one's you know, miles better than another team. Hopefully it's going to be a very tight league this season. That should make it quite exciting. Importantly, though, we have got off to a winning start. That, that is the most important bit, actually. A winning start is perhaps the best way to start the season, which obviously is true. I don't know why it wouldn't be the best way to start a season. So then, next episode then. Uh, next episode is going to be on Thursday, of course. I'm going to do a video tomorrow. Uh, Thursday is going to be your next episode. And uh, who do we play? I reckon we go for Loughborough Dynamo, I think. Uh, we're going to stick to one game in an episode for now whilst we just start this new series so I can sort of introduce you to more things every single episode. Although saying it, the game after that is against Sheffield and that is the oldest club in, in the world, isn't it? Sheffield FC. So actually, sorry Loughborough Dynamo, we'll do it another time. We're going to do Sheffield in the next episode just because it's such an old club. 1857 they were formed. That's... That's a long time ago. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss an episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.